Okay, welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today, I want to talk about the Mat E Open Fault Detection Device. We're going to have a look through the manual. We're going to show the insides of this. Obviously, you can see the insides now, but I'm going to talk through what's actually inside one of these. And then, in a later video, we're going to show this being installed out on site alongside a 22 kilowatt three phase charge point. And you'll note inside here, I don't have any RCD protection or anything like that. It is just a basic pen fault detection device with this little special gubbins down here. So I'm going to shrink me down now on this screen. So this is the Matty product that I'd mentioned at the start of this video. It's a 63 amp three phase connection point for a single EV charge point. You'll see it's reasonably chunky, which I like. You need plenty of space for wiring room and your cable entry. And again, we'll discuss that in a bit. There's a QR code that leads off to the manual. I like that because everybody loses the instruction book and it's always available there on the internet if you ever need it. And also, it's a little bit better for the environment. So if we have a look inside this, if I can open the door, you'll see the variant I have got is the basic pen fault detection. We've got our main switch at the top there, a little test switch, and also this um, disconnection device. We'll explain exactly what that is in a little bit of time when we look through the manual. But if I just pop this front sheet out and show you what's inside this. So I'll get my hands in. I've taken the screws off already. Obviously that doesn't just release um, away from the front of all of this. It does have screws in. I've taken them off to speed up the video. So you'll see inside here, we've essentially got the main switch at the top, which is where you bring your incoming cables into. You've got the magic that does the pen fault detection. A little test point here where you can activate the pen fault, and we'll go through that in the manual, but basically it disconnects L1 to make it see a loss of a phase, and it will put everything into, into operation, if you like, make the magic happen. And down the bottom here is this... Um, connection point for your outgoing circuits to the load and we'll speak a bit about what this does but you can see on there it is um, a 60947 ARD plus MCB and you can see there it's got manual and auto reset this is the manual reset variant uh, Matty have got a product out now that does auto reset just the pen fault detection none of the other gubbins um, and we'll speak about that when we're looking through the manual but you see here if I try and hold that in the on position doesn't want to know because obviously there's no voltage in here so none of this will hold and allow any kind of connection to the outgoing circuits unless you have got power connection with the neutral and the earth and that there is no anomalies in any of that as soon as it sees a loss of a phase or a rising voltage on the earthing conductor is essentially the basic principle it will not allow this to stay in a closed position it opens it disconnects the load of all conductors so that charge point essentially just becomes a piece of plastic metal on the wall that can't present any danger to a user beyond the electric vehicle that might be connected to it so that's um how these things work i'm going to pop onto the desk and we'll shoot through the manual have a bit of a better chat about it this is also going to feature in a video of a three-phase charge point we are installing so this might come out first and then the charge point should be the next one after. So you can see it out on site and in use as well. So just to give another quick look through that, you've got your main switch there, which is the normal 609473 you'd be familiar with in most of your three phase boards that you fit and you've got your 125 amp rating on that. There's then this Green Tech International Open um, detection and a little test trigger here that you can see is sort of wired into that and also into the L1. So that's gonna simulate a, a loss of a phase to operate the test feature. I'll speak about that as we go through the manual. And then down here, you've got your connection for all of your outgoing cabling off to the charge point itself. And you can see that's for your L1, L2, L3, neutral, and your earth. So a point of note with this, if you're bringing a supply circuit down in a steel wire armor to this enclosure, that's absolutely fine, but you must remember your outgoing circuit, do not export that earthing to the charge point because essentially you will bypass what this product is trying to do. So you either need to disconnect your armorings at the end of the charge point um, or make sure that you disconnect them as they leave this use of plastic stuffing gland or such. Personally, I prefer to take the armorings with an earth on them down to the charge point itself and then isolate that from the charge point 
so there's no possibility of it being exported onto the charger but equally you have some earth metallic protection on the cable leading down there there are different ways of doing it let's jump back to the desk and have a run through the manual hopefully that shrank me down a reasonable size and you can see the little manual just to the side of the screen i'm going to jump over now and we'll have a look through that um, let me open up the right page there we go so we can see here this is the electric vehicle charger connection unit and the model i have got next to me here is the evu-1-63 and this is just to connect one single three phase charge point now you'll see here it gives you the product advisory notice that it must be installed to the wiring regs and then you get all of the basics to do what um, what it's designed to do so it's for commercial applications three phase pme supplies feeding electric vehicle chargers uh, it tells you to read all of these instructions carefully and explains the different models that this instruction manual is covering so the matty range of electric vehicle charge connection units are fitted with open technology designed to protect electric vehicle charging equipment when installed onto three phase pme infrastructures so this unit incorporates a five pole isolator with built in under voltage release mechanism. And I'll show you that if I haven't already, um, how you can't hold it in the on position unless there is electrical energy on all of the inputs to that. So it says here on detection of fault conditions, the open electronic circuit de-energizes the under voltage release mechanism, which disconnects all poles of the supply, including the CPC. And again, we'll speak a little bit about how you need to be careful with your outgoing circuit between this matty and your charge point. Again, I just want to emphasize that one. The five pole isolator is manually resettable in line with the IET regs. So, and the code of practice point of note there, it does distinguish between those two, although they are essentially one and the same. Um, you can get matty products now that auto reset just on the pen fault and their products are available to go and view on their website, go and check that out. You know, there's more information there about that. I've not actually seen one in the flesh myself as yet, but it still doesn't reset any of the um, earth fault leakage or overcurrent faults that may have occurred. It's just when a pen fault is now removed from the supply to that piece of equipment, it will automatically reset. This one doesn't do any of that. If something has gone wrong somewhere in the installation leading up to this and something's operated, you need to manually reset it. Um, so it says here that the open technology does not require earth rods or measuring electrodes to function correctly so it doesn't need any reference to earth aside from what you would have on your normal um, PME system the units are designed to be installed indoors so that's a good point of note you can't go fitting these outside and it needs to be mounted securely with the lid hinges on the left so it's clearly stating that there and then you get all of your sizes and everything which is great with your fixing points and such these are really clear CAD diagrams which is nice and then this is the electrical connection point so this is the variant that is here in front of us but we'll run through some of the other different layouts as well so you can see here you've got your incoming supply where you have your L1, L2, L3 neutral and your earth coming in and then if you look on the outgoing side of that main switch it then drops down into this um, automatically sorry manually resettable um, switch that will open if any of the phases uh, are lost or there is a rising voltage on the earth and you can see you've got your L1, L2, L3 neutral and your connection through on that CPC coming into that as well and then your outgoing circuits to the car charger connect into the bottom of that and again your CPC needs to be connected into there if you are using a steel wire armour um, some people connect the armourings at the load end so if the earth opens um, this is going to disconnect the, um, the air thing on that steel wire armor cable um, that's an option that's available to you if you wanted my preference is to connect the armorings into the um, matty itself and then make sure they are isolated from the charge point at the load end if you were using steel wire armor and the reason for that is it then remains part of the electrical system internal to the installation so if the earth is rising on any of the bonding in the building or anything like that you've still got all of the armorings and any glands rising and falling to the same potential internal to that installation if we have them connected through to the the charge point for example and there's no physical connection onto the matte product and essentially the internal earthing system you can then have an issue if you've got a fault 
external to that being imported into the earthing system as a whole. So I prefer to do it like that if you are using steel wire armour cable. Take it from the matty but isolate it at the load end away from the charge point because obviously if you um, are bypassing essentially the matty, if you take the steel wire armour and land it into the charge point itself and connect it into the CPC at the load end, if this operates and opens the, the CPC inside the matty, you're still going to have that connection. So I hope that makes sense. And there are different ways of doing this. People do it in all sorts of different methods. And you can um, remove the chance of any of the earth metallic, uh, sheath, sorry, earth metallic coverings causing you an issue if you use a cable that doesn't incorporate it to go out to the charge point. So people will use NYY, or you can use some of the specific EV Procell cables, for example, the Doncaster cables. Um, variant as well where it doesn't have any armorings built into that and you still have suitable mechanical protection leading lead to the charge points so that, I mean that's that's a decision for you as the designer and installer if you need steel wire armor but if you do make sure you consider um, the fact that you can export the earth bypassing all of these gubbins if you're not careful uh, there's the test button as well just to say with that one and uh, it does cover that later on in these instructions so we'll have a look at that now you can see this is for another model which would cover three um, single phase charge points being connected onto a three phase system. So you can see essentially that just loops off the outgoing side of that automatic, um, sorry, that voltage detection device, if we should call it simply, and um, splits it into those three single phase charge points. And then again, you can see here, um, this is just a different rating of the same thing. So there's the 32 amp model, and again, you've got the same thing again on the on the bottom there as well just different current ratings um, I do think yeah so here we go this is a 32 amp version and this one has some RCD protection built in as well I think that's what that is um, on the bottom there so it's got an RCD built into the unit we don't need RCD protection internal to this for the charge point we're installing, it's covered in a different part of the installation, so it wasn't necessary. Uh, and the same again there. And then you can see here, it says to connect the incoming cable from the distribution board directly to the four pole isolator, the CPC should be connected to the terminal box. Connect the outgoing cable to the MCB, RCBO, or five pole isolator, depending on the unit being installed. The outgoing CPC should be connected to the isolated earth bar, except for in the EVU 163TP, which is this, where it just goes straight into the earth on that um, on the block here. You can see it there. Uh, it says here, on completion of the installation, tightness of all electrical connections should be checked. So even the manufacturer ones check them all, and there are specifications for tightening of the torque values. Some units have the 230 volt under voltage release mechanism. This one doesn't, and there's a diagram there for that one. There's then the operating instructions, so the incoming isolator uh, closed. The unit will monitor the incoming supply approximately one second after closing the incoming isolator. The open monitor will energize the under voltage release mechanism of the five pole isolator. At this point, the five pole isolator can be closed to connect the load to the incoming supply. In the event the open unit detects a fault condition on the neutral of the monitored supply for a period of four seconds, the internal relays will de-energize and remove the supply to the under voltage release mechanism of the four pole isolator. And this will cause the five pole isolator to open disconnecting all phases, neutral and CPC from the load. After any fault condition detected, causing the monitor to enter a trip condition, the monitor must be reset by cycling to the power by the unit via the four pole incoming isolator. So you can't just start resetting it, you have to actually switch it on and off and that's after making an assessment of what might have caused it to operate in the first place. Then it explains about the test function and exactly what that does. So it says essentially here, this disconnects L1 from the open monitor and create a fault condition. After 0.7 seconds, the open monitor will trip the five pole isolator by de-energizing the under voltage release mechanism, and they recommend the unit is tested on a six monthly basis. So then it gives you all of the parameters for this charge point, the voltages that it will work to, the loadings, its dimensions, its weight, the operating temperature, it's always a factor, uh, the power consumption, its IP rating, and then the all important torque values. So you can see there, the give a minimum and maximum of the tightening torque um, on these products. 
and you can see there if you're using 2.5 mil it's 1.5 newton meters and then if you're using 25 mil it's 2 newton meters and then there's the same sort of differential between the MCBs and the RCBOs and such depending on the product that you're using uh, and then yeah you just get all of the contact details for Matty and uh, confirmance with British standards so you can see here the four it says at the bottom there the following harmonized standards and technical specifications have been applied uh, and then it gives all of those I'm not going to read through them so yeah that's the instruction manual I'll just zoom that down and zoom me back up and I'm gonna have to take that call so I'll jump back in a second good timing okay so business getting in the way of fun for a second there I hope you've enjoyed this video it is just a quick look at the Matty product I've only made it because I was interested to know while I was waiting for this to be delivered same thing with electricians when you've got a job coming up and you're installing something for the first time a bit of insight of what to expect is always helpful and that's the idea of this one as I say I'm going to show this been installed out on site we're going to put it alongside a three phase EV charge point we'll cover it like we usually do on all of the other EV installs and we can show you how this actually works in practice as well thank you all for watching please thumbs up thumbs down let me know if you enjoy this kind of content and I'll keep the videos coming catch you all on the next one